Let's say that you wanted to do a calculation involving uh, electrolysis, especially electroplating. So somebody might be uh, interested in electroplating like a little baby shoe, and this one is electroplated with uh, copper. Or you might want to do something like, you know, to electroplate a teapot, you know, certainly get a nice silver teapot out of it. So for any of these, we have to kind of make some connections now between chemistry and physics. And one of the ideas here is that the circuit, you know, there, there's a flow of electricity through the circuit, and that you talk about that in terms of amps, which is short for amperes. Now that is the amount of flow of electrons through a circuit. The other part is coulombs, and coulombs is the amount of charge that goes through. So, um, sort of like, let's say we're talking about water going through a pipe, okay, coulombs would be the amount of water that goes through, uh, and amps would be the rate of flow through which it goes. Now, for um, chemistry, one of the things we need to know then is that one coulomb is equal to a one amp circuit going for one second. So one coulomb equals one amp times seconds. Now the other connection we need to make is the whole thing between the chemistry and the physics. And this is where we get the Faraday constant after Michael Faraday. And this little uh, right I have up here is actually pulled right off of the AP test on the formula sheet. And what this says is that one mole of electrons is 96,500 coulombs, which we said was charge. So a mole of electrons is 96,500 coulombs, and that whole thing is called the Faraday constant, that kind of funny looking F. <clears throat> so let's try a problem. Let's say what we wanted to do was to um, run a, let's say, 10 amp circuit. And let's say that we let it run for three minutes. And this was in a solution that had copper. Uh, what mass of copper metal would be plated in uh, three minutes in a 10 amp circuit? Now, this is a little different than most problems because what we do is we say the given is actually amps times time. So I'm going to start off here with 10 amps times 3 minutes. Now I don't want to work in minutes, I want to work in seconds. So I know that 1 minute is 60 seconds. And we just learned a minute ago that one amp second is one coulomb. And we also learned that there's 96,500 coulombs in one mole of electrons. And finally, because we're talking about copper, we know that it takes two moles of electrons to get one mole of copper. And we know that because uh, copper 2 plus, you had to pick up two electrons in order to become copper neutral. So it's a two to one thing. So that's our setup, and all we have to do is calculate. Now this answer I have so far is going to give me um, my moles, okay, but I really have one more step, and that is one mole of copper is 63.546 grams of copper. I get that from the periodic table. So when I'm all done, I get a 1.1853 grams of copper, which we can round that off to 1.19 grams of copper. Now, if I were to try to do this with some other um, chemical, okay, then like from my silver teapot, that's going to change this expression right there. So instead of two moles of electrons for one mole of copper, I would have one mole of electrons for every one mole of silver. If I was trying to do gold, I might have three moles of electrons per one mole of gold. So that will make a difference, and of course it would also change the uh, molar mass. And that's how this kind of calculation is done.